podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. What impact did MLR Rising have on tonight's draft? I do think that it bolstered the stock of some of the players. There are, there are certain players that people just didn't know anything about. And I think if you go down, especially it's a, all the way through the draft, as I was sitting there making notes, every single time it was character. As much as anything else, everybody could play, but who showed up with character? Uh, who were some of the guys who just exuded that, you know, that team play and that positivity? I think everyone kind of understands that something exciting is going on over there um, and what they're, what they're trying to do for, I guess, American rugby or rugby in the U.S. in general is really exciting. Um, and to be able to be a part of that um, is something that, you know, I'm really excited about. I'm sure all the anthem draftees are super excited for as well. Welcome to U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live. Interviews with the biggest names in American rugby. The New England Free Jacks, Major League Rugby Champions. Scott! Hey, good evening, everybody, or good day, or good morning, whenever you're listening to this podcast or watching it live right now. Thank you all so much for tuning in uh, to the show. This is U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live. This is our MLR Draft special show. We've done shows before about the draft, Fitzy. I don't know if we've ever actually done, like, a Sousa Drafts over, let's talk about a show. Have we done yeah. that? No, I don't think so. This is, we're breaking new ground for us. I'm excited. I know. Let's not mess it up. <laughs> 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 so you've been busy. You were just on another show. Uh, how'd that go? Good. I was on with uh, Zach Laney. He's uh, part of the college, college rugby wrap up. He's actually the uh, commissioner of NCR's uh, Division Three. Used to be called Small College, but we were joined by Brandon Sparks from USA Rugby. He's also part of the anthem setup, and then uh, Matt McCarthy just uh, riffing on, getting our reaction, and having a little bit of fun there. It was a good time. Yeah, I caught a couple of a couple of things early on with uh, Matt just chiming with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> much. You need that. Uh, so, you know, just real quick, uh, just everyone should remember that um, USA men do play Canada this weekend, which yeah. I'm really excited about. Uh, so tune to that. I believe that the game is in California, so get your tickets yeah. now. And, and if I remember correctly, Fitz, I have to get, is it Rugby Pass has it? Or is it? Uh, it's or Peacock. Peacock, even better. Yeah. I think Rugby Pass might be carrying it, but Peacock is, is uh, yeah, if you watch it in the Summer Olympics, Peacock feels nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good news. I, I like the direction of uh, USA Games going the way it is, uh, as far as broadcasting goes. But so before we get to our guest tonight, uh, in, in just a few minutes, we have Alice Goff joining us, who knows more about the collegiate landscape than I think anyone we've ever talked to, especially us two. <laughs> uh, so I'm excited to talk about talk about the draft with him in the mm-hmm. next 30 minutes. Uh, and then later in the show, we do have a few of the draftees lined up to join us. Uh, hopefully we can get them on. I know it's it's a big night for them, you know, the, especially the, the number one pick, Eric Stories. You know, again, number one. I know. I, I, I'm, I'm imagining the NFL drafts. So like they're partying right now. They're whatever <laughs> else. Maybe not so much, but hopefully we get them on. And uh, I, I'm pretty confident we'll get a couple of those guys on later. Mm-hmm. They're going to happen to the show for at least 10 minutes. So, so I'm really excited about talking to those guys. Uh, but before that, I think we just really get into it. Let's, let's just bring in our first guest. Yeah. Alex Goff, hanging out in his basement. Hey, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> hanging out in my basement. I never leave. How you doing? <laughs> we're good how are you um, i'm great uh it's been uh really fun this uh this entire summer really to uh track the draft and uh yes i gotta, I gotta say you know i, I want to thank uh you know maybe major league rugby invited me to to stay with them a lot of rising guys and, and that was great yeah. that was terrific yeah. and, and for them to do that was 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 really cool i hope to do it again so stay in the dorms with the kids yeah Oh, that's great. And and you did, you did the drive the hour and a half from D.C. to that game. You were, uh, <laughs> or whatever it was. Right, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I drove, it just happened. Actually, I, I basically said, I, I don't want to drive. Who's driving me? And who's going to wait? And who's waiting? Because I have to do the press conference afterward. Who's waiting for them to take me back? And, and Kevin Battle did that, which was nice. Well, Alex, the next time you got to you gotta take the train down. It goes right into Fredericksburg there. Okay. Next time. All right, I got to put that down. That, wow. that, that would that would make sense. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's let's now let's just get into it. Uh, generally speaking, you just uh, brought up rising. So let's talk about that. Uh, you can talk yeah. about names if you want players if you'd like, but just generally speaking, what impact did MLR Rising have on tonight's draft? Uh, I, I do think that it bolstered uh, the 
the stock of some of the players. There are, there are certain players that people just didn't know anything about. And I think um, if you go down, especially it's a, all the way through the draft, as I was sitting there making notes, every single time it was character. As much as anything else, everybody could play, but who, who showed up with character? Uh, who are some of the guys who just um, exuded that, you know, that team play and that positivity? Uh, so you saw someone like uh, LaDon Mathis, who hardly participated after the first date because he essentially collapsed from heat exhaustion and had to go to the hospital. But he's he's updating everybody and he goes, guys, I really want to be back. And and he shows up at the game with a te- with a with a blanket around him to make sure he maintains his body temperature properly uh, for the game. He doesn't play, but he's part of it. And I think that probably said a lot to some people. Say, like, okay, this is a guy who's who's not all about himself. Mm. Yeah. You, you mentioned um, um, well, you mentioned MLR Rising, right? He was on the the campus. Yeah. Mary Washington, way back in my college days, I played one game down there. I love that field, sending nice. around like the Owens. It's, it's a great setup. Really neat little small college town. You mentioned character, right? And yeah. it was, the weather definitely played a part, right? It was hot and humid all throughout the week. And the national day of the game, you know, it was a rainy day. Yeah, it was bad. We we did have one day training was hot and humid, and suddenly the lightning came and and it was like Dunkirk. Everybody who had a car was suddenly their job was to get <laughs> rugby players in, in the car. And I have a car. It's 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 an old Honda SUV. I managed to squeeze uh, four players into it. I don't know how three of them got in the back seat. You got all the screws. Uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, I know. He's like they were, they were all forwards. I don't know what's going on. But uh, um, yeah, you know. They had to manage that. They had to take care of, and so they moved some trainings to the evening, that something like that. And then, yes, there was a discussion the night before the game, like, what are we going to do? It says right now the the uh, forecast is ninety percent thunder and lightning. What are we going to do? And so they worked way. How how could they push the schedule? And could they still make the test match and show up at halftime? And the discussion of well, the more important thing is to play the game, right? Play the game and miss the test match because you got to play the game. As it turned out, everything evened out, and the, the weather wasn't quite that bad. We were able to play it, and Ed, that's what everybody wanted was to play it. So let's let's talk a little bit about the, this crop of players, right? And let's let's talk. Oh, yes. So this is the we're we're starting to move beyond the players who have had maybe like full three four years in college, right? Past the COVID stuff that kind of messed up some college rugby there, right? So we're starting to see players play more. Um, I guess. And we started to see um, a few more NCR players get drafted. And I know the draft is still pretty dominated by players from CRA schools. Feel free to chime in on that. But I wanted to talk about, like, the, how do you feel that the quality of the players in this year's draft is going up? Is it because players are playing more because we moved beyond COVID? Schools are getting more resources. Is the quality of college rugby going up? Coaching is getting better. Is it all of it? Uh, you know, I, th- I think – those are all great factors. It's also that you know the the overseas players understanding that they have to do some things that they have to do to maintain their residency, if that's going to be a factor. So you saw, uh, Seth Shefferman went in the third round, great player, really showed well. Well, he's in his fourth year in the United States. He's actually getting married to an American girl, so he's he's hitting it on two levels. Just to make sure, yeah, <laughs> for him. Just, and that's why I was joking with uh, another player. I'm like, what does the dating picture look like for you? I mean, <laughs> you're going to... Um, At least married. But, but, but all... Of, not above it, really. But uh, um, if if they understand that, right, they understand those are, the, those are the expectations, that's coming from just some continuity from we got it, we're playing, right, we're here. People aren't scrambling around saying, where do I play? There's not a lot of transferring going on. There's some, but but people are, are becoming more educated as to where they want to go and what they want to do. Uh, so that's all very important. Um, quality of play, I would say, you know, look, there are certain positions we didn't have a lot of this year. And we didn't have a lot of hookers that said, whoa, get this guy, right? This meal trainer and the other guys were good, but they weren't like, whoa, we, 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 we need to draft him. Um, I thought actually there were a lot of scrum halves. I'm a little disappointed how many scrum halves got, got uh, drafted. Actually, a lot of loose forwards, a lot of centers, not a lot of locks. 
and height was a big problem. Uh, Ray Santiago being a little bit about 6'5 and 6'6, six, six, one of the reasons he was drafted in the first round. Um, so we, so it's it's not about, uh, and, and I'll say one more thing, wing. In college rugby, we still got small, fast wings, and then you go to the professional level, you need to be able to handle yourself in contact. So it's very difficult there. Uh, so um, it, it's, it's cyclical in one way um, that you'll see certain players coming in a certain position come up and something like that. And sometimes you look around and say, we just don't have them this year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let's talk about these picks now, Alex. I mean, there's, there's not okay. a lot of surprise in the top three, right? Uh, Story, right. Junior, Eirig. But as yeah. of those three, you know, what picks surprised you? Maybe either fell in a late rounds or maybe they went higher than you expected. Got to, got to say my list in front of me here. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, there were a couple of surprises. Um, well, I mean, I don't know about a surprise, but when, you know, I was going over and we did a thing with Will Hooley and the prediction, and I basically said, look, uh, Aiden King, Alex Aguero, Matt Karen, and Calvin Irig, uh, those guys, I kind of like, you could pick any one of them. Um, as it turned out, it was Karen who got bumped down to the second round, um, which is a little bit, a little bit tough. I thought he was terrific, um, and uh, so that that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, Aiden King moving up to to six. I really like him, but I see him as more of a running flanker, and I don't know, as opposed to a tackling poaching flanker. So. Um, at the same time, you know, he, he knows how to do that. Maybe that's just how Penn State used him. Um, that, that was kind of interesting to me. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that Ray Santiago made the first round. Um, I thought he could. Um, he checks all the boxes except he plays for a Division II team. Everything else is, is great. Um, so, um, uh, you know, that was, that was great. Uh, I thought Danny Bray would go earlier, and I thought Stephen Thomas even would go earlier. So the prop from UC Santa Barbara, he went down a third round. I think he's he's great. I, I think he showed really, really well at MLR Rising. He was a positive, upbeat kind of guy. Um, I thought he was first round. Uh, and Thomasine, I thought, too, but at the same time, it's like with these teams, if you know you're getting the guy, if you have a chat with him and say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I've told everybody I'm a Southern California guy, whatever, then you're like, okay, well, then we won't worry about it. Um, and I think the the guy who got himself into that 36 was Emmanuel Lay um, at, yeah. at 36. And the story about him was he showed up at Santa Clara as a freshman in COVID. Nobody's playing. Nobody's doing anything. And he's he ends up being the one knocking on people's doors and saying, hey, we have, uh, we know, we're allowed to play touch. Why aren't we playing touch? Right. And all the seniors and juniors are like, what, what? And he goes, no, come on, come on, come on, let's go play. So he actually did that as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's just an indication of the type of guy he is. Type of yeah. he is so. Alex, yeah. what about a guy like, um, so I don't want to nitpick. I thought Anthem did a great job. Fine. But yeah. Anthem's yeah. mission is, as we all know, developing American talent. And there's that one position there, that number 10 jersey, where I would have loved to have them to have drafted a pure fly hat. I watched yeah. all your videos. Fantastic job. I really right. like Dalton Musselman. Like it's he, yes. and it's, I'm paraphrasing and sound like the typical fly up build from a, from a good school, a good program. Went to yep. Old Gold, which I think is an intriguing place to land. Mm-hmm. But um, I was kind of hoping that was going to get a fly up. It was all like a. I know yeah, that, I think so. I no, I agree. Others can kind of. You know, yeah, I mean, that, go ahead. On, on my list of overlooked players was Danny Masterson. And and uh, so Musselman or Masterson, that would make sense to me. Now Panther uh, can play fly out, and I think that they liked him from Trinidad and Tobago. But I believe he's about a year away from being USA eligible for that, uh, and that's his goal. So that's okay. And they've done that before with a couple of other players, um, where they're like, okay, you're you're on the cusp. That's fine. You say that's what your goal is. What is he? Is he going to be playing? Uh, he's not going to be playing for Trinidad and Tobago. It's a yeah. test match player. Um, so, but I agree. Um, I kind of would have liked to see that at the same time, right? Masterson's an undrafted free agent. Maybe they talked to him about that. And, um, you know, sometimes it's also a situation where a player might say, hey, 
they said I'm going to get time. They promised me minutes, and so I'm going to go there. So, yeah. Um, but I, what I really love about Anthem is that they traded for picks. Yeah. And they, they traded for picks, and they what they have to trade is foreigner spots. So they trade away foreigner spots, and they move from having, you know, the, the, the what is it, the one uh, 13 and 25, mm -hmm. and they kept those 13 and 25, and they took the two and the five pick, and I think they may have gotten one more. Um, but uh, at least five picks. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, they took the they they had the last uh last pick in round two as well, uh so that's great you know love that because that's what I I think if you're going to be a fan of Anthem that's what you want to see, they they drafted to get more picks and then they drafted American players. And speaking of other other MLR teams, Alex, let's go to the other side of the table, the Free Jacks, who you know clearly are back to back champs. I was really yeah. intrigued by their picks clearly. <laughs> uh, I was actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> now, uh, Pono uh, of Carry On, and then uh, also to, speaking of uh, Oh Glory, Juma. I thought those three picks were very strong picks, especially from the Free Jacks, because they have such a strong loose forward group. You know, mm -hmm. and, and and you know, we, you, you talked about Pono at length online. Also, he's yeah. you know a captain of St. Mary's, you know, also double champion, high school champion, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, how how does a team like the Free Jacks make? players like Pono and carry on fit in. I'm not sure. I, well, I, it might be that there's a rotation um, as they, they see who they've got. You could also see one of these guys go on well to say Anthem, something like that as well. Uh, I, I, it's possible. I think they looked at, so, so Matt carry was the number one ball carrier for the red team in MMR rising. Pono Kayashi was the number one ball carrier for the black team by a wide margin. Um, both of them, they each scored tries. Uh, Kyosha got two, I think. Um, so you look at that and go, which is the better player? Carry on probably made more tackle. Kyoshi made yardage way above everybody else. Which is the better player? I don't know. Let's get both. Let's get both of them and see what happens. And if and if we think one fits in with us better, maybe we loan the other one. Um, Aaron Zoom is terrific. Aaron Zoom is the one guy who really doesn't isn't super close to being USA eligible on residency. Um, so that's tough, but he's the guy to get if, if you if that's not happening because he is a dynamic and special he's such a great guy. I mean just such a humble, fantastic young man. So um, I think uh, um, in the end I think you know maybe they keep the, maybe they keep one in the end you know keep the one that fits in right. Mm. Any, any, I mean, of any of the players we've talked about or even we haven't talked about yet, any you think uh, will make an immediate impact, say, on an MLR club? Um, as yeah, a, uh, you know what? Uh, the the guy that uh, uh, the guy that I um, I was very excited about was Darius Law. Mm -hmm. uh, again, here's a character guy. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy who changed his body. He was a skinny little, you know, guy who ran around people and now he can run through them um so i, I I'm, I'm excited you know if he gets some time i'm really excited to see him um that was doubt uh, like, yeah lead. yeah yeah so you know that you know let's let's roll the dice on him um and uh you know neil trainer i think i mean you know, the, the anthem guys maybe that doesn't count because they're probably going to get more time uh anyway uh you know that that the, the minutes they're going to get um, and I'm leading, I'm looking over my list. So I don't, I don't, uh, I don't miss anybody here. Um, that, that I think, um, well, I'll tell you what, the, the guy who, the guy who really excited me, I think, um, uh, who I didn't know that well, even though I'd actually talked to him was Aiden Ridgeway. Mm -hmm. So, so Aiden, Aiden blew away like the, the speed numbers, the Bronco numbers just blew everybody away. Yes. He's from South Africa. I think he's got a year to go. Maybe to be a USA guy. Um, he's a scrum half. He didn't get to play scrum half of the NLR rising game because of injuries. They stuck him in at fly half and he was yeah. really good. And he was terrific under the high ball. He was, he was fantastic under the high ball. Uh, so you know, you're like, well, maybe you can play a little fly, uh, fullback. 
So I think there's someone who they might look at and say his character. I um, will know there. Aaron uh, eligible in January, so he'll be fine, right? He'll 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 reach he'll reach his fifth, fifth year, his sixtieth month in January. No problem there, but he's just um, that that's a guy who just like exuded character. They said, "Oh, last minute, you're you're playing the fly half." And he's like, "Okay, by the way, I'll play really well." You know, you don't know me that well. It's, it, it's interesting where he landed too. Old Glory, they've got some great yeah. young scrub halves. You know, we talked loan situation, yeah. the Phantom. So yeah, we'll see if he stays in yeah. DC. So yeah. we're getting to see the character. I think it'll be interesting to see who 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 rises above because of who they are off the field or in the locker room. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Now back to the show. Alex, you know, outside of the yeah. first round or, you know, for yeah. a team, or at least in the history of the draft, which, you know, isn't that old. Right. How many of these players have had uh, an impact on the MLR side? Because they even go back a few years to the Free Jacks Johnson, who didn't pan out. You know, he was their number one. You know, is it a quick drop off after that first round? Or could it um, It can be. It's. A, I mean, it can be a quick drop off within the first round as well. Um, it's a quick drop off in terms of who who is drafted, who gets a lot of minutes, and then you know it, it's like so somebody will get twelve hundred minutes in a season, and then somebody else gets nine hundred, and the next one gets like four hundred. It's uh, and I think I was doing the the numbers. I think it was pretty much you know how how many of the draft year gets. Um, it's like 640 minutes a, a season, which is 40 minutes a game, and it was like three. It's so, yeah. but that's it's supposed to be hard, it's supposed to be difficult. Um, so, uh, uh, it and and you will see the first round picks are more likely to get those minutes at least early on. Uh, but there have been players, uh, uh Colin Gross. Uh, really, burst. Uh, he was a second round pick, I believe. Might have been third. I think he was a second round pick, um, and and he plays a lot, so that's that's great. You know, good for him. So generally speaking, I know we talked about the free jacks a minute ago. So let's yeah. talk about teams more. Um, have you had a chance to think about which teams drafted better than others? I know it's 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 tough. To, I mean, at least in my mind, it's tough okay. to really figure that out, but. In your in your opinion, which teams uh, maybe pass the grade? Anthem aside, so Anthem yeah, did great. Yes. Yeah. All right, Chicago, Chicago. Uh, so Peyton Wall is fantastic. Peyton Wall's a great dynamic attacking player, and the thing is, everybody knows that. So he shows up in, at at MLR Rising, and he gets to play on a day when he hardly ever gets the ball, and he still has an impact. His kick chase was fantastic. Within the first four minutes of the game. He's chased down a kick, tackled the guy, forced a turnover, and they score. And he hasn't touched the ball with these impact of the game. Uh, that's why he got in the first round. So um, I, you know, I thought that was that was impressive. And then uh, uh, Jake Kedavec, uh he's a, he's a powerful young man, right? He's a big carrier of the ball. He's a hard tackler. He doesn't care about any glory or anything like that. So I think it's a really good pick that a lot of people were impressed with him and there was talk about him as a guy who'd come in to smash people. Um, and then they also got Alex Hernandez. Now, Alex Hernandez is an interesting guy from Marion. Uh, his parents are from Mexico City. Uh, he lives in a bilingual household. Um, and uh, so, hola. Uh, um, he is like all smiles all the time. He is the glue for Marion. He, he is the... Uh, the most fun guy to be have have around. He hasn't played rugby for very long, but he's a big, physical, powerful guy. I think he's a project. I don't. I you know you're not going to put him on front row starting from the house, um, but he's he physically he just looks great and and emotionally. I mean, he's a guy. Who said please, teach me. He he went to Marion to play football and then moved to rugby. So. That's a really interesting story. USA eligible, um, grew up in the United States, and um, I believe born in the United States. Um, uh, but that, those are three really cool picks because I think these are guys uh, who all are ultimately character guys, 
unselfish, physically strong, physically powerful, who know how to play right. Mm. And uh, you, you mentioned a couple of guys you would love to have seen got drafted, right? Like I like Master Sin, you know, and, and you yeah. brought up in other videos like, hey, okay. it's okay if you don't get drafted. There's only 30 picks. Yes. Three right. rounds. If yeah. you don't get drafted, you have free agency in a sense because you can, you know, pick a team you want to go with, grab on with a club team. But a lot of that one in a thought there, are there maybe a handful of players who didn't get drafted who we shouldn't be surprised kind of ends up on, say, an MLR club or, or here an MLR club yeah. because, they, because of whatever reason? I, I wrote down four names. I was thinking thinking you were going to ask me this. Like four names. But Sam Masterson, I think, is definitely good kicking fly half. Uh, uh, a kid who I remember when he was playing for Sir Thomas Aquinas, like if you blew at him too hard, he'd fall over. He's so tight. And now he's a big, strong guy. Um, I think I think he he pieces it together somewhere. Um, George O'Brien, I was surprised he didn't get drafted the scrum half out of Arizona. Uh, from North Carolina, very quick, uh, um, good, consistent pass. Um, I, you know, I think it's great. You know, again, like there's a North Carolina connection there, so maybe that's where he goes. Um, and another one with North Carolina it's a connection, Jack Brown, also from Arizona, big, strong guy, maybe a little bit, maybe a tweener to a certain extent, not quite a lock, not quite, you know, not a seven. So is he just a six? I don't know. His guy works enormously hard, um, very quiet. Um, and and I, I think there's a place for him somewhere. And the other one, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. We didn't see, we didn't see any... Uh, uh, of the 36 players, 28 of them were D1A. Four of them were uh, NCR D1. Three of them were from Canadian teams, and then one from Division Two. We didn't see a single D1 AA player. Uh, Chris Jensfold out of Louisville, big, strong lad. I, I, he needs to play bigger and stronger, I think. He needs to be meaner, and I think perhaps some of the D1 AA guys showed at MLR Rising were like, whoa. These guys aren't messing around. Um, it can be a little bit intimidating. I think that uh, Chris Jensel, though, you, you look at him and you say, yeah, this is this is a guy. He's strong and powerful and can win line out all for us and drive scrums for us. So I think somebody will will want him. Alex, well, one more, just because, you know, we, we've always yeah. talked about, well, you hear people talk about, oh, we got to get these college football guys that, you know, don't play college football anymore and they see, hey, I can run with the ball. So one of the one of the players that um, that I really like, you brought him up in your video, uh, Michael Sanderson, I believe, in center for yeah. Elon, who right. uh, was a was I think a middle linebacker maybe in yeah. college. Um, I don't know, just a little more thoughts on him. Like, do, do you think there's a future for him in rugby? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they, all, all the all the physical metrics happened for him. He he yeah. knew how to. He knew how to go to a combine and show up and, and perform. He just doesn't know enough rugby. And so ultimately, in the MLR Rising thing, they're looking, we've got to win a rugby game here. And, and I don't know if I can put you in there. And, and what are you going to do? And, and he, he had a couple of moments once he got on there. But he is uh, very quick. He's very fit. He's physically strong. He doesn't look. I mean, he's not a big bulky guy because he's uh, outside back. That's fine. But I get the feeling um, we will see people like that come through. Um, there's a guy coming out of San Diego, University of San Diego. I believe his name is Butler, who's a who's a wrestler slash football player who's been playing for me for like four weeks. And, he, and I saw I saw well, I'm exaggerating, but but I saw him at the um, at the championship game uh, this past spring uh, San Diego against Iowa State. And he and he came on in the second half and he blew people away. I mean, he did an eight man pick. Wow. He went eighty meters to score, and you could see, oh, that's and he, somebody goes, well, he's a football player. You're like, okay, now I get it, right? That's why he, he's a little bit he's a, he's crazy, but a little bit confused in the ruts. He'll get there, absolutely. And that's what I think uh, an academy team or this partnership that they're really pushing with, like the ARP uh, on the East Coast. That would make a lot of sense for some of these players to do that. Um, I think we've got another team. I think we've got a Florida team coming into the the ARP now. So that would be a, a yeah. really cool connection uh, for some of these players to just decide. Yeah. They probably Jens Hold or something like that. 
or if I'm Sanderson, I'm going to maybe do that and say, go, go hang out in Miami for a while. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be worse, right? <laughs> now, last year, when we had you on last year, we asked you, um, yeah. you know, about some of the best and worst highlight videos you've seen. Uh, it, seems like, it seems like the players have listened. Uh, you even called out yeah. a player at one point. Have you right. seen them improve? <laughs> uh, I've seen them improve. I've also seen them de-emphasize, though. I think some some yeah. team players don't do as many. I think what they do is they go, uh, yeah, you know, I'll I'll kind of link to some some. Uh, game film, full game film, which I think is what more people want to see. But I did call out uh, Jake Greet because he organized his highlight video in a way that made a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. Said, "Hey, look, this is this is me attacking as a center. This is me attacking as a wing. This is me working under the ball as a fullback. This is me making, playing defense. This is you know, and and pausing and circling himself and saying, "This is me, okay, and here I am making a pass." And so he. He understood what he had to show in his video, and and I think a few more people are figuring that out. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's because it's not a highlight video, really; it's a scouting video. And I, I maybe if they think of it that way, it'd be better. Alex Goff, uh, always a blast talking to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, enjoy your it. Wealth of knowledge is just like. <laughs> Not only did we use you to research this show, now we have you on the show. <laughs> there we go. All right, that's all right. Well, it's all right. I steal from everybody, so go ahead, take it from me. Uh, I'm happy to help. Happy to help. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot. It was great. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all right. Well. Thanks, so we'll, we'll talk again soon, Alex. Thanks a lot. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Yep. Again, always that wealth of knowledge I love from yeah. Alex, and uh, yeah. I actually finally met him for the first time at the USA DC, uh, USA Scotland game. So it was really nice to see. Yeah, person. But you know, with that said, let's move on. We we teased prior to the show, early in the show, that we're going to have potentially two other guests in the second half, and one of them is waiting for us. And uh, yeah, I think we should probably get to it. What do you think? Let's do this thing, man. About, right? Of course. <laughs> All right. Our, our crack our crack writers wrote something about it. Oh, there it is. All right. Our next guest is the 2024 MLR number one draft pick for oh. Anthony Rugby Club. Yeah, Anthony Rugby Club. Let's welcome. Eric Storty. Eric. Hey. How are you, man? I'm doing well. How are you guys? If we had an applause machine. <laughs> and Eric, congratulations, man. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm I'm doing well. I'm really excited. Um, pretty, pretty surreal experience, obviously. Uh, I got to spend it with a lot of the other Mary's boys, which is exciting. Um, and kind of, I'm all taking that next step together, which was, which was super nice. But thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, too. I know it's, it's, been just a short time since you well we assume a short time since you found out here but uh first off how does it feel to be a part of a future major league rugby bar trivia night question you know who was the first draft (laughs) big it could happen eric it could happen good yeah (laughs) all right so so man just talk about this i mean talk about the emotions of being picked uh not just drafted to a professional league but being picked number one and you know, also, how long has this been in your mind of something you you wanted to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's real special. It's um, it's almost humbling in a way too, because it's like in the moment itself, you kind of realize it's not. I got to get here by myself. Obviously, I've had an amazing supporting cast around me with my family, my friends, my teammates, coaches, and um, you know, it really makes you appreciate everyone who's like been there for you so long and is still with me now. So, I think definitely a humbling experience, and it's also quite motivating. Um, and going to a team like Anthem, like, you know, I've only heard good things about the boys over there and the culture over there. And, you know, I'm really, really excited to be a part of that club. And I think, you know, some special things are, are coming soon and, and I can't wait to get to work. Eric, quick, I know you're done with college, but quick pop quiz mm-hmm. here. Can you name all the players drafted number number one overall of MOR? <laughs> <laughs> I can help me you that if you don't. <laughs> yep. If I pulled up the Instagram post, I could, no. I, <laughs> it's no cheating. No, it's Mooney, um, I know Gall is there. Yeah. Yep. Um, Rose. Yeah. In this year, and I'm forgetting that year before Gala. There's another back now, uh, Eric. Yep, yeah, Eric Napati. Right. I'll give it to you. Ding, ding, ding. Well done. All right. Let's stop. No more, no more quizzes from you. Yeah, you mentioned it. Rick Rose, right? Sam Gala, Eric Napati, Kata Uh do you feel, do you feel any pressure there being drafted number one overall? I guess. Um, I mean, 
I don't really like see it as pressure necessarily more of like, it's a really cool opportunity to be part of a real special club. Um, like the vision of Anthem is everything I, I really get on board with and I really like, um, the chance to play at the next level is, is really exciting. Um, and you know, I definitely, I'm excited to go ready to get to work. Obviously it's going to be a go and earn your spot type of thing and work hard and earn the respect of my teammates and, and coaches. So just excited to get to work. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just more excited yeah. than after I guess. Well, I mean, one congrats to St. Mary's program, right? D1A, yeah. uh, national champions. Six picks, six of your teammates, uh, six total drafted from the St. Mary's program. Um, you know, just, you know, the Pono went to New England. I believe that was fourth overall. Uh, you know, what just, what, what is it about the St. Mary's program there that uh, it's such a strong one? So many, so many great players coming out of there. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's hard to, I guess it's hard to explain almost. Um, it all starts with the culture and, and the team, or the culture and the team. And then obviously it all stems from Tim. I think Tim is the most like undervalued rugby coach ever, probably just with what he's able to accomplish with the resources he has and being a volunteer coach competing with all these uh, big time varsity and, and NCAA or D1, whatever it is programs. And it's, you know, we're just a random club sport team. So a school, I think we have 3,300 people at our school right now. Um, and to be able to compete where we are, I think speaks a lot to the culture that, that he's built. So yeah, I love St. Mary's. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very proud to have gone there. Um, and definitely going to stay connected with it as I move on. And for those people who are not familiar with your game, Eric, you know, how would you describe your game? Or or, is, or also, is there a current player who you like to model yourself after your game? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm still I'm still searching for my like, I guess pure rugby identity. Um, as of right now, I'm I really try to be a triple threat with the ball. Um, so being able to run, kick, and pass, and then on defense, obviously bringing line speed and and you know, forcing the offense to make decisions. Um, but, you know, like, I, I, I just love learning. I think there's a lot of different players I like watching. Um, I, I really enjoy a few different players in the MLR, too. Like, we've got Pete, obviously, with the same race connection. I've always looked up to him um, ever since I've been younger. And um, I really like watching, you know, pros like Bowden Barrett, Gary Rigg, you know, guys like that are, are obviously real fun to watch. Um, and just kind of learning different niche things that they do and, and trying to apply it to my game if, if I can. And have you had any conversations with the Anthem coaches yet at all? I know you may have had conversations with Scott as well. And if so, uh, what's been the message? Yeah, I was, I got to work with Al um, in the past couple of camps. And um, I'm, you know, I really, really like how he coaches. And, you know, he's a really good person. Um, I think that's, that speaks volumes. Um, you know, the conversations is just like, I think everyone kind of understands that something exciting is going on over there um, and what they're, what they're trying to do for I guess American rugby or rugby in the U.S. in general is really exciting. Um, and to be able to be a part of that um, is something that, you know, I'm really excited about. I'm sure all the Anthem draftees are super excited for as well. Yeah, Eric, speaking of uh, USA Rugby, Men's Eagles, big weekend, right? The mm -hmm. the Men's Eagles in action for the Pacific Nations Cup taking on Canada. It's ABC, as everyone says, always beat Canada. <laughs> um, <laughs> your name to the Men's Eagles now traveling reserves for the Pacific Nations Cup. So, you're, you know, you're you're in that setup, right? I guess just how does it feel to be kind of identified and recognized and kind of on that on that path to, you know, put it on the American jersey? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's an honor. I think it's it's my, like, ultimate goal to represent this country, and I think a lot of other American rugby players would say the same exact thing, right? Um, so just to be in that environment meant a lot, and, and it was super motivating and seeing the professionalism they have and the – Honestly, the, the culture they have and just the people that were there was was really um, inspiring almost. And it, it made me more and more motivated to get back there um, and work my tail off and, you know, control everything I can control to get there. Yeah, I guess it's, it's – oh, bad, Bill. What? No. Yeah, I was going to say, Eric, so far from, you know, what you've seen in the conversations you've had with, with the folks in, in the Ben's Eagles camp, what's what's the preparation been like for, uh, for this upcoming match against Canada? Share what you can <laughs> no, I think, you know, I think the, the main thing is playing with lo like love, work and energy are the three pillars, right? So incorporating that into our, into our play um, as much as we can, but you know, I'm really excited to watch and, you know, I know they're going to do great and, and put on, so it'll be fun to watch. Eric, we, we talked about MLR rising with Alice Goff earlier in the show and if mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I didn't do any research on it, whatever else, but I noticed you weren't there for mm -hmm. that. Was there any particular reason why you weren't participating in that? Yeah, so I was um, at the Eagles camp for 
on the Romania and Scotland games. So I was I was in camps. I was in DC, but I just wasn't at the, the MLR Rising. Yeah, I didn't see you at the bars, so you must have been working out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric, you've got a you've got a younger brother who, who plays on the St. Mary's College. Yeah. Now that you've been drafted number one overall, is there pressure on your younger brother then to follow in your footsteps and go say number one overall in the next year yeah. or so? <laughs> now, Mario Mario is a beat and you know he's he's my favorite regular player to watch for sure because he's just electric um so he's got plenty of big good things coming his way um and he's you know he's a real big kid I'm excited to watch him too and kind of tune back in but yeah I think I think he'll be very successful with whatever he chooses to do well Eric man thank you so much for coming on here and and giving us a valuable time tonight uh again congratulations on being drafted number one overall in the 24 uh, MLR draft. Look forward to seeing you out there in the Anthem jersey and USA jersey again soon. Sweet. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. All right, man. Thank Have you. a great night. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And back to the show. You know, let's move on. We have another guest waiting for us right now. Uh, he's another uh, a draft pick I'm excited about as well. It, you know, I'm excited about a lot of these guys and you know, getting into, hopefully getting into their MLR team's jersey yeah. and getting a lot of minutes too. And I, and I really do think this guy's also can get a lot of minutes. Uh, let's welcome the number six overall pick for New Orleans, New Orleans, Nola Gold, <laughs> Flanko for Penn State. Here is Aiden King. Hey, Aiden. Hey, how you all doing? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, no, pretty good. Can't complain. Can't complain. It's been a good night so far. <laughs> yes, yeah, even better now. You're on this show. So, uh... <laughs> well, man, uh, congratulations on being drafted. Uh, number six for you in this draft. Uh, talk about this, uh, the emotions of getting drafted to uh, Noah Gold. It's kind of surreal, to be honest. I, It's not like my rugby path through the U.S. leaving Australia was always something of a question. I wanted to come over here and get a valuable degree and get to try something new. And I think my experience here has been amazing. And then getting to take this to the next level, that's how I've strived for everything in my life. Complete one level at a time. And then once you get to a good point in that, you try and get to the next one, the next goal, you know, getting a starting spot, getting in the 23 and then continue from there. So I think just going to live in the moment right now, but excited to get to work. And, and you mentioned... Australia there, all right. Mm -hmm. Born in Houston, am I getting this right? Um, lived in Anchorage, moved to Australia, back to Pennsylvania for college. Now New Orleans. Uh, I mean, you must have a lot of stamps in that passport of yours. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting pretty <clears throat> filled up. My family's kind of from all over the place. Like, yeah, you're completely correct. I lived in Houston for about six weeks, then Anchorage, Alaska, till I was about <laughs> seven, eight, and then went to Australia. Did all my high school, middle school, everything there. And then I just wanted to come back for college. My whole family moved back, so it kind of just seemed like a a good step forward to be around family a little bit more. Yeah, and and well, you're not alone there, now, right? And when you get down to New Orleans, you're two picks from Nola Gold, right? From out of Penn State, and your teammate Flat Dalton Musselman uh, must be nice to know that you'll have a familiar face uh, with you when you start down there with Nola Gold. No, hundred percent. Yeah, we had the whole team watching the draft tonight, so it was pretty exciting moment we found out we're going to be in, in the same place i got a good four years with him i think he's one of the best tens in the nation and i think the recent sevens tournament kind of showed his abilities so i'm super excited to see what we can both kind of do down there to make our mark affect the team as best as we can were there, were, were, were there, sorry were there any bets on who's going to be drafted higher between you two it, it was it was very interesting during the week because <laughs> we were both talking to them and he's like i think i'm going to go there and i'm like i think i'll as well <laughs> you know, it was being text on sunday night when we were talking but i'm just happy it works out how it did and ultimately you know where you get picks only a starting point and i know he'll go out there and prove like he was the number one pick and i'll do the same so that's kind of his attitude and mine as well exactly you you mentioned some conversations uh were did you have an inkling of where you might have gone in the draft like where gm's kind of like hey aiden you know like, yeah, have your phone ready type thing, right? I'm, th I'm thinking of the, the NFL draft, right, where, you know, the GM calls you right before, and they're like, hey, Aiden, you know, I just want to let you know you're a normal gold member now. Like, is that happening in MLR with, with the players? Or did the GM call them up, like, a few minutes? I mean, I know it's a little bit different, but did you have a sense that Noel Gold's not draft you? 
you had a good sense, like Ryan down there has been really honest through the whole process. And honestly, all the GMs I talked to throughout the process were quite organized. They're on top of stuff and they reached out, you know, two, three weeks ago, kind of after the whole rising occurred. And then they started reaching out talking to players. And I think you got a good sense. They've been completely, they were completely honest through the whole process about where their heads were at and they just wanted the same. And I think the conversation that I had with Ryan kind of put me in a spot where I had the idea that it was going to happen, but you know, there's never any, nothing's official as everyone knows. But no, I got the call the minute the pick happened. Ryan was right on the phone about five seconds later, ready to talk. So that was kind of the whole process of the evening. You know, one thing we mentioned earlier um, was about the impact in COVID on a lot of players. And um, if I do the math right, I mean, you, you were pretty much starting right around then, right? With, with COVID slowing things down, but have you seen over the past few years the uh, the level of play going up in the collegiate level because of more and more games, you know, uh, with your opponents and with your own teammates? A hundred percent. This is something I've even talked about with Penn State rugby alum, but the quality of rugby in the U.S., especially at the college level, even at the NLR level, is continuing to rise. I said I know more experience about the college, but from my time here, I've seen it. Schools, especially in the rugby East, getting to play there, I've seen the impact and the changes of programs within even the last four years, how they've gotten so much better. I think in the rugby East, we have close games. Everyone's competitive. There's no game. I think that usually ends up as a whitewash and just an absolute destruction. So I think the quality in, in the past from the alumni I've talked to, that wasn't always the case. So mm. I think the competition's increasing. And I think the combination of four people that grew up in different countries and foreign athletes coming mixed with U.S. born uh, rugby players is helping everyone advance in towards the right direction and lifting us to one of be one of the best rugby nations in the future. You're here. And who is Penn state rugby's big rival? Well, I've been here. We've always been, it's been pretty tight with Navy. i always, mm -hmm. they're always a good game. I think obviously Kutztown's pretty close, but the last few years, I know my sophomore year, we got a good win over them. And then the last few years have been competitive as well. So I think it's always a bit of ever since that win a couple of years ago, it's kind of just, been a little rivalry for my year and their years, so mm -hmm. kind of different for everyone how the results pan out. But I definitely yeah. think, yeah, it's Coach Town and the Navy for me. Yeah, <clears throat> Aiden. Uh, so Noel Gold has a history of of drafting Frankers out of college and then you know giving them an opportunity to to play. You know, get significant time. How do you feel about your chances of coming on and coming onto the squad and competing for some minutes right away? I think. I, I'm kind of confident in myself and I want to compete wherever I go. And I think as long as teams are willing to give me the opportunity, I'm going to go out there, bring physicality, bring the defense I brought here, and hopefully get my opportunity if the coach decides. Like ultimately, all I can do at the end of the day is put in my best effort and actually come up to camp prepared. Obviously, I got a season here. So I'll be coming off some, well, half a season. So I got some games I'll be coming off. So I'll be pretty fit, ready to go, contact preps. I think that gives me a great chance to kind of come in, set a tone, and at least give myself the best chance I can have. Yeah, Once, the, um, go ahead, Spitzy. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, um, you know, between now and, like, January, I guess, or February, when, when players start to report to camp, a lot of Scott Lawrence in that MLR Rising doc was like, players go out, play in the fall, play for a D1 side, play for the ARP team. Do you do you have plans to do some of that to get more game time in, in the run-up to the MLR season? Yeah, so I, I still got eligibility here at Penn State, so I'm going to definitely play the fall here. And yeah. obviously we're our new coach, with Justin Hundley leaving, going to Zach Mizell, and I'm super excited to help, especially in this first little bit, kind of help the team get off the ground, help the new coach as much as I can and get us back into the win column in the Rugby East and – Ultimately, I'm going to get 10, 11 games to kind of get prep. Ultimately, get better at rugby. I've always, this has always been my opinion, but you got to play rugby to get better at rugby. So, yeah. getting those games against good competition is going to definitely help. Yeah. And talk about Penn State's program. Uh, what about it has really prepared you for this next level? I think the conference we're in, as well as the difficulty of the college as well, I think being a pro athlete, People think it's all athletics and there's much more to that. Being organized and being someone that can 
be on top of everything that comes with the next level, being on time, being, you know, five minutes early to everything, especially school like this, even studying engineering. I feel like I've been through a lot of difficult tasks with this. So that kind of pressed me for the time commitment that professional rugby takes. And then I think from a rugby perspective, getting to play some of the best players in the country week in, week out, you know, you know, you know, iron sharpens iron. So you got to kind of go that route and make sure that we get, I get as much game time as I can around some of the best players. And I think the program's done a great job at scheduling us hard opponents over the last, I'm at least my four years here. So, yeah. Well, I expect to see video on Instagram or TikTok, or whatever, you walking into camp going, hey, buddy, MLR draft pick here. <laughs> like, right. who, who's a draft pick and has two thumbs, whatever they're saying. I don't know. <laughs> now we had the whole team out here watching tonight, so it was good to get all the boys around it and together. You, sure. you were all together, you said? Yeah, we were all in the living room. I'll send the post to Ryan later, but we got a video, so we got about 12, 15 of us in the room, so it was good. Nice, man. Aiden, man, it, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Again, congratulations on being drafted to NOLA Gold. Looking forward to see you in, in the gold uniform, and and good luck with Penn State in the fall, and we'll hopefully talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Ah, yes. Another one down. Uh, another good guy. I, it, like, I think like um, what I was saying in the first half is just, you know, you look at character, yeah. At um, at leaders, uh, or, you know, especially you know skills as well, but character and leadership and morals and all that stuff. I think so, such a big deal. And, and I mean, I know we're just talking to these guys for ten minutes, but I feel like yeah. you get something out of them. You get a you get a good feel from them, especially with Aiden or and and story as well. Well, the, uh, so it's good. At, his major was engineering. You know, I mean, like you could have picked recreational studies or something, right? He played full time no. high level college rugby, and he's also trying to get an engineering degree, which. You know, I didn't get in, I didn't do engineering in college. That seemed difficult. <laughs> I I did, and look where I am. I'm doing a podcast with you. Um, <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what's funny? I, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, a lot of players. If you think about it. Um, uh, who is it? Uh, um, uh, Nick Savetta. You know, Blaine Scully. These are all guys who went and got their masters in in at Co yeah. I don't know Cambridge or wherever they went. But These overachievers, they, men's best rugby players in the in the country, getting masters and business schools. What the heck? PhD and stuff. Yeah, what are you doing, Bill? Well, <laughs> <laughs> living paycheck to paycheck, just like the American dream, isn't that what it is? <laughs> now there is something to say about these players, and, and, and again. You know, I, I really was taken back for a second there about some of these picks, you know, some of these trades to get yeah. picks. And I, I don't know, but what's your opinion? Have you seen trades like this before in the last couple of drafts? There've been, there've been a couple. Um, I think what's been unique about this year, again, is the introduction to, to, to Anthem, right? And with yeah. their mission being to get young American players and develop them and knowing that you know, they're willing to trade for their foreign player slots to bring on some young American players. I think other MLR teams who maybe have a different point of view on developing players, right, where they can draft a guy. Maybe they're not, he is not a part of their immediate, like, one- or two-year plan, but if they can draft them, maybe loan him down to Anfront or get playing experience and then come back up. Like, it'll be interesting to see if New England asks for Junior Gaffer to come back. Um, yeah. But it, Anthem, Anthem, wants to draft guys and is going to give them a chance to play right away or at least to compete. So you love that, right? So the fact that Anthem traded up to get the two pick and then traded with DC to get pick number five, so three picks in the top five, like that's, that's you know, that's it's awesome to see because you got to think those players are going to get a real shot to play. Oh, 100%. All right, speaking of the player, we do have another one waiting for us right now. Yeah. Joining us in the U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live greed room, probably inhaling way too many jelly beans. Um <laughs> And whatever else we have out for these people. Uh, <laughs> let's welcome number 14 pick of the 2024 MLR draft, uh, New England Free Jacks flanker, Ooh. Matt Carrion. Hey, Matt. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Good. Doing well. Doing better now, for sure. Oh, I bet, man. Congratulations on getting drafted by the Free Jacks. Talk about it. Uh, talk about how that feels. Yeah, it was great. I mean, um, the build up ever since uh you know that first invitation came from the rising and it's just really just been a process ever since that that starting point and now just to you know get the result um 
have a, a designated spot where you're going to know where you're going, kind of plan for it a little better is it's it's really exciting. Really, really looking forward to it though. Well, Matt, we we watched the MLR Rising doc. You were one of the stars, man, of that documentary. Um, you know, do you feel like that event really helped maybe like kind of raise your profile and your game to these MLR jams? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd say um, typically it's a little harder, um, especially coming from Life University. You're full of like superstars, a lot of really good individual players, you know, from overseas, um, all different backgrounds. Um, and then, you know, just getting a, a chance to, you know, just showcase your skills amongst like a, a different group, a new group, um, just different talented guys. Um, it, it really just gave me a chance to put my hand up um, and it was exactly what I was looking for. And I got what I needed out of it for sure. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned life program, right? The pedigree there, uh, two other teammates, three total players drafted from life university. Yeah. I mean, tell us, man. Yeah, exactly. What <laughs> like such a strong program? What's going on down there, man? What's the secret? <laughs> it, it's really, it's really. Um, it comes down to our coaching and uh, just the stuff that we live by every day. Um, we just have a set of core values that we go by every single day, and and you know, we just we take them into our actual life. Um, we take them onto the training pitch. We take them onto the game in uh, full matches, and you know, every scenario, we just bring the same type of intensity. Fitzy, I don't know if I told you this, but I played rugby in Atlanta also. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You, felt the you, you felt the heat. You felt the heat. Yeah. I even played at Life at Double. Anyway, years ago, way yeah. before you, man. I don't even right. know if you were born then. Uh, who's the head coach at Life right now? Blake Bradford. It is Blake. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's also you know it's got I don't want to say pressure on you, Matt, but also like uh, respect to the history of Life, right? Because you go back to like AJ McGinty, the U.S. Eagle, played there. You know. A lot of great talents come through Life University. So can you just go back a few years, like deciding to go to Life to play rugby? Was that a tough decision for you to make? Or was it like, no, I got to go there? Um. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, a, yeah, it was, it was definitely, it was, a, it was a definitely pretty much an instant decision once I found out that there was interest. Um, so I was like just a young guy with a, a little bit of potential, um, I definitely believed in myself, but to the point, like life was usually like that big school kind of in the distance, like they were top five in the country. It was, it was kind of just a dream to go somewhere like that. And then, uh, once I heard, I sent in my film, um, coach got back to me, let me know like he was interested, come down for a visit. And then just like right away made my decision because they, they had something great going on and I, I'd love to be a part of it. And now drafted by the free jacks, uh, did you have a, a a few teams in mind? It's like I'd love to play for this team, that team. You, you can you don't have to say free jacks, it's okay. But <laughs> was it a small list of teams that I would love to play for that team? Um, so not te so not technically. Um, I didn't really want to like jinx myself. Weirdly enough, <laughs> like um, I I had uh, more or less teams in which like I I would prefer to go like. Um, Obviously, East Coast would be the easiest for me, so so I I kind of preferred that route. Um, but I didn't really have any set like, you know, like top five or anything, just because I I didn't really want to put anything in the air, you know, where I could jinx it or you know potentially, you know, <laughs> screw myself over in some way. <laughs> but well, yeah, it so, ended up great. Ended up great. Yeah. Well, so Matthew, so so Bill is buried in the league. Bill's a huge New England Free Jacks fan, so I'm very thrilled that you got drafted by the Free Jacks. <laughs> They are back-to-back -back defending champions, so I'm an old glory DC fan. So the fact that I'm asking this question is killing me right now. But are you ready to compete <laughs> for another? Are you ready to compete for an MLR championship in year one? I suppose. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, like when they drafted me, um, literally first thought in my mind is like I I just can't wait to get to work with these guys, and uh, it, it's really like a similar mindset and aspect to when I was at life. Um, they're championship teams in and out every single year competing top five teams and you know like i learned the most from programs like that as well and and the fact that the free jacks are coming off of another championship it's just a great opportunity for me to be able to just soak everything in and talking about the free jacks coaching staff you know they have a new head coach well new returning head coach uh but a lot of uh um gears and everything is still in place tom Conley is still running the show 
Uh, the Free Jacks put on a, a great atmosphere for fans, which every player I've talked to, even away players, said it's pretty amazing to play in front of. But then they just signed a new uh, a new assistant coach, you know, a, a legendary coach or player, Dual Senegal, uh, a Ford himself. So I'm not sure how much you know about him, but you're coming into an environment where you have this guy with all of his credentials coaching you. But also, the Free Jacks already have a really strong, deep, uh, loose forwards or, or pack right now. So are you worried at all about maybe getting famous right away? Or are you just more concentrating on, listen, I need to learn from these guys. And when the time comes, the time comes. I'm definitely uh, 100% more excited. Um, you know, just improve myself and learn from those guys. The way I'm looking at it right now is is I'm not really focused on the people that are in my position, you know, that, that came before me, that came in with me. It's more just where can I benefit? How can I do better? And what aspects do I need to focus on day by day to get those better? That's what I'm looking at. What about, uh, I know this might be down the line here, but certainly yeah. part of the pathway, aspirations, say, beyond MOR. Uh, men's Eagles, is that just something where it's like a like a goal for you? Yeah, it, it definitely is. Definitely is. Um, not sure where in the path it's going to come, um, but I, I believe that if I just keep to what I've been doing, um, just, just keep relentless, just, just keep relentless on, on improving, getting better, um, making sure I'm checking all the boxes. And then I'm sure the correct result or the result that I want is going to come eventually. Um, I was speaking to my, um, my head coach, Blake Bradford about that actually as well. And it's really just a matter of, uh, getting MLR minutes. Uh, that was the conversation that we had is to get MLR minutes. So, um, that's the next step for sure. Matthew, what'd you study? I study business. Business. And then right now I'm looking to get a, uh, I'm getting a master's in positive psychology. Positive psychology? What is that? <laughs> yeah. What's that? What is that? What is positive psychology? Um, it, it's just it's just positive psychology in the workplace, just kind of seeing how, um, how people function in the workplace and kind of the mentality and stuff behind that, like, you know, just yeah. deeper level of it. Well, like, Matt, go ahead. Can I one last thing? No, I was just going to say, Matt, you're, you're from Carlisle, PA, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my, my sister went to Dickinson College, and I've been to a couple of the car shows up there. So I had wow. to shout out Carlisle, PA real quick. Yes, 100%. Shout out Carlisle, PA. That, that's <laughs> insane. I actually I actually used to train on that field a little bit. We would sneak in and uh, bring like a few rugby balls to my teammates, and we would just go throw the ball around. I was going to ask him if he knew somebody. Hey, do you know uh, Carol from uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, Matthew, Carl. man, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Again, congratulations yep. on being drafted by the Free Jacks. Uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, in the red, white, and blue in person also. So I'm looking forward to meeting you in person as well. Again, congratulations and good luck in the future. Cool. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, guys. All right. Cheers. Thanks for having me on. Oh, say I cut him off. Sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> I do it every time. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, well, uh, I bring it back on, but I don't want to embarrass myself again. Uh, <laughs> that's why I need a we need a director to do all this stuff. Yeah, you're doing great, man. We had four guests on. I don't think we've ever had four guests on before. Like boom, 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 stacked up like that. I'm yeah, just in here saying dumb stuff. You actually have to like move windows and stuff. There's like stuff that people can't see you're doing. We're trying to trying to give you some credit here. I'm saying I'm dumb stuff. I'm... <laughs> That's my job. I say the dumb stuff yes. just make things look good. Yeah, uh, listeners, if you you see our 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 notes, uh, you see mine have all these questions, and you see Fitz, and he says just says dumb stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even need notes to say that. Like, that's easy. yeah, exactly. All right, that's that's awesome. Uh, thank you, Fitzy. That's a great hour of uh, conversations. Alice Goff was on. You know, we had Eric Story, the number one draft pick. Eric Story was on. Uh, who else we had? We had Aiden King, the number six traffic for Noel Gold, flanker out of Penn State. And we just spoke to uh, Matthew Carrion, who is a flanker out of Life University uh, for the New England Free Jacks. So three, I think, three great picks, um, three great guys to talk to. Uh, positive psychology. I got to look that up a little more. Positive you said that's cool. <laughs> I, I was thinking like what? Like glass half full kind of guy? Or is it more of a... <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, positive psychology. Yeah, I, is. I like it. I like it. I never heard of that. That's not, I can learn something new every day. All right. With that said, uh, please, listeners, if you could, please like us, follow us, subscribe to us in your, on your favorite podcast player or here on YouTube. Um, and also follow us on social media at Rugby Morning and at Eagles Overseas. 
uh, and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a great weekend, everybody. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.